I got some minnow boards from NetGate and I wanted to uh, show them uh, off and uh, basically go over how they are different than other single board computers you might be familiar with, like the Raspberry Pi. The primary difference here, I say primary, one of the biggest differences is that this is an x86 Intel processor. So it's it's not ARM, which is uh, most other single board computers that you might be familiar with are. Um, and the benefit of it being an x86 platform is that there are um, the devices on the board are discoverable. If you've ever um, gone in depth with uh, ARM single board computers, you know that in a lot of cases, you have to you have to tell the board exactly how to communicate with the peripherals on the device, um, and that requires um, support on a per board basis. Um, that depending on how popular that board is, it that support may or may never make it to the upstream Linux kernel. So with this, the benefit here is that this is just an x86 platform. It's got UEFI, it's got ACPI, it's got PCI Express. All of the peripherals are discoverable on these discoverable buses. So that's a re that's a real plus as far as uh, ease of use and ease of getting up and running. That this board is really not functionally different than your laptop, your desktop, or a server. So. Uh, I'll just go over the highlights here. We've got the Intel Atom processor here. It's dual core. It's a Intel Atom E3826, a dual core at 1.46 gigahertz with one megabyte cache. You got uh, two gigabytes of RAM. Here's those two packages there. That's DDR3 uh, low power. You got a gigabit Ethernet jack, Intel HD graphics, a micro HDMI out. I say this is a micro HDMI output. So it's even smaller than the mini. It's very small. Um, and they did that to have all the connectors that you probably use most commonly all on one side of the board. Yep, there's a SATA port here, a UART connector here, SD card slot here. There's actually a 12 volt, uh, a, a, I think it's 12 volt fan header here. And this has a passive heat sink on it, but there are two holes in the board here and here that allow for an aftermarket active heat sink to be put on it. I'm not sure what, how much this chip throttles under load, um, but that may increase your performance if you're running a performance sensitive workload on here. Uh, on this side, you've got two USB ports. The top one is USB 2. The top, the bottom one is USB 3. And then here you've got your GPIO headers um, for just whatever you want to do. And this is a 5 volt um, uh, barrel jack input here on the unit. This is that on the minnow board turbo, they've populated a lot more of the uh, connectors. One of them is the real time clock. You can put a battery in here and it actually maintains the clock. You don't have to do network time sync every time it comes up, which is not, which is a nice improvement over other single board computers that typically the real time clock is left out. Um, if we look on the bottom here, you can see that there's this connector here. And this connector allows uh, expansion of the minnow board platform via what they call lures. And I've got one of those lures here, and I'll show it to you. So if we turn it over, you can see that this lure, you know, this is the connector that connects to the main board. And if we turn it over, there's a breakout. And there's uh, mini PCIe and M SATA. And this is really nice because on a lot of single board computers, um, SD cards are the only option as far as hard drives. And there's no SATA connectivity on a lot of them. And so on this board, there's two ways you can access what I would call real storage, that is via SATA. Um, there's a, via this SATA port on the main board or through this lure in the M SATA port here. Um, one trick is, <laughs> one thing you'll find out is if you try to attach an external SSD to the SATA slot on the um, main board that there's no SATA power for it. And so that can be a problem <laughs> trying to get power from an external source. But um, SATA power is just five volts. And if you're running an SSD, which doesn't consume a lot of power, do not do this with a magnetic drive. It'll probably blow out components on the board. But I actually created a Franken cable here that pulls SATA power off of the GPIO pins. So this is something you can do. Um, it's not that hard, but yeah, that's, a, that's an option. 
So you can see here, I've got the lure. If I take an MSATA, this is just a regular MSATA 60 gigabyte uh, SSD. And we can snap that in here like that. Then we can attach the lure to the board like this. And you can stack them up like that. And that's kind of like what it looks like. So that's something you can do. And um, something else that I did was I bought some standoffs on Amazon. These are just little nylon standoffs that you can uh, use to uh, stack these boards up together. I think this kit was maybe $10. Um, so that's something you can do if you want to create a stack of these boards, which uh, I did and um, I might make a video on that later. Another thing that uh, NetGate makes is um, enclosures for, um, for these boards. So you can see that these are uh, you know, custom made. You, you can have them laser etched with different things. Um, they've got standoffs inside here and it's all metal with uh, the ventilation holes. So um, yeah. So this platform has a lot of cool features, a lot to offer, and uh, pretty powerful x86, so it works uh, a lot better out of the box than some ARM boards do, especially with Linux. With Linux, I'm, for example, I installed Fedora 24 on mine. You can boot, you put the install media on a USB stick, you boot from USB, you install, and it, you install it just like you would on a laptop or a desktop. So it's a pretty slick platform. I highly recommend it.